are going to get a true Pokemon battle on PS2 here between Lucario and Jigglypuff. That's going to be Chris FTW from the BBB. What a crew name. <laughs> Anyways, the one thing I do like that Chris is doing here, giving him, giving him some space. Like, I know, you know what? When it comes down to the aerials, I'm kind of the one winning. Oh, I have blasting hitboxes, but you got to be careful when you Chris sing. FTW, don't, don't give no dams, dude. He was like, sleep right now. Let's go rest. Please sleep. Sing. Let me sing you a lullaby. Oh, snap. All right. Great air dodge read coming up from Sue. Catching that forward smash. Repositioning himself with the Aura Sphere cancels. So that's one thing that is uh, very signature to Lucario is his ability to, like, weave in it out uh, with and turn himself around with the Aura Sphere to kind of position himself to get potential edge guards with a back air or just straight up shoot it in your face. And, uh, Jigglypuff being such a light character, not going to survive to that. Yeah, the one thing you do want to utilize in Lucario's game plan here is using B reverse, wave bounce, a lot of those options to catch your opponent off guard with the Aura Sphere as, as the actual charge is a hitbox, but as well as also to get your opponent mixed up in the movement here. And even then, the one thing, if you're good at Lucario, you're really good at utilizing your movement, utilizing your aerials. The Aura itself gives you different combos at different percent depending on how much Aura you have. So the same combo you might have gotten at 40% may not work at 160, but this, a combo that will work at 160 will not, will not work at 140, and it'll definitely be more of a kill combo. So that's one thing that you have to utilize about Lucario, is making sure that your aura, what combos work with aura at best and what percent. And Sue, absolutely sparing no expenses here, playing completely safe. He's got a whole stock lead. Chris FTW yet to find the stock. He's at 89%. This is certainly KO percent for him right now. It was KO per percent for him like 40% ago. Yeah. For being completely honest, especially with against Lucario, who has so much rage and aura built up at this point. 140% on Sue yet to lose this life. Another aura sphere to the face, and that's gonna be Chris FTW on his last stock. Yo, oh, he oh. got it. Charge that S smash. There yeah. you go. You got a you got a stock against Sue. Let's go, Chris. If I were if I were Sue, I would have gone for a force bomb, only because the actual charge itself would have actually like hit Chris. So sure, that would have yeah. yeah. But I respect he tried to approach and maybe get the close range force bomb. I actually got the critical hit with that one. But yeah, man. Instead, all you all you were was counting sheep. I think at that point, the like the force bomb might actually just extend his hurt box too. So yeah, it, it does a little bit. Push yourself yeah, a little it's kind of hard to punish Sing at times unless you have like a truly disjointed move. A move that's not part of your hurtbox as well. Uh, okay. And Sue, not really phased by that stock loss. Oh! Oh, yeah. That almost hit. That rest almost hit, though. Yeah, that did. I don't know if it would have killed at that percent, but it, it almost hit. All right. Well, Chris FTW, not too shabby in this game number one. Looking pretty good. Definitely holding his own. Sue just played that clinically, just weaved in and out, punished everything uh, accordingly, and that's how it happened, man. Two stock for game number one. Gonna stick to the Lucario, and Chris making a switch to the Ice Climbers. A little ballsy, I have to say. I'm part of the camp that thinks Ice Climbers suck, and I'll tell you why. Because they, they are good. They have their desyncs, they have their combos. I feel like but I mean, look me, look me straight in the face. Look me in the eyes with a straight face and tell me that Ice Climbers don't suck when Nana starts acting a fool, dude. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Sorry. That is 100% factual. It, it, I thought you were gonna tell me like, look me straight in the face and ask and tell me uh, Ice Climbers main who actually like has wins. I mean, I, I don't even know who the Ice Climbers yeah. are besides like Big D in, up in Canada. So. It is true that sometimes though matchup and experience can be the difficult opponent as well. The inability to know how the matchup should be played and how they play the matchup. Ooh, the one thing that Ice Climbers do suck is they no longer have great desyncs because every patch they seem to be removing that. But the one thing they do have kind of going on for them is they have pretty decent damage output and the landing once Dana is gone it isn't the greatest though. Chris just narrowly avoiding a hard punish right there, recovering high with the uh, side special. I mean like, Popo and Nana gonna have like cloud back air. Their upper definitely feels like a strongest cloud's upper for sure. And Chris really holding his own. I mean, he had so many reads at the beginning to get all this damage that he has on soon now, but he is gonna struggle a little bit more, especially not having Nana at his disposal. Great recovery from him yet again, but he has to play the single single Popo. Actually, he's playing Nana right now, so. Yeah. Single climber. 
it, back then, like, the Sopo was... Oh, that's yeah. it. Back then, people used to call it the Sopo, but now it's like Nana and Popo instead of Popo and Nana. Yeah, there's uh, various alts. Uh, some, a few of the alts let you control Nana as opposed to Popo. Uh, but for some pretty city states, we'll just call it Solo Climber. Anyways, stock number two here, already taking 62%. Not a good look yeah, for man. Chris. So far, Popo just taking 62% because he almost just died from that look one. And I that, do like the dude. fact that Sue takes the time to say, you know what, this is only a level 3 computer equivalent. I might as well just go ahead and get rid of him right now. And that's how you're supposed to play against the eye climbers for sure. You got to uh, separate the two and really go in on Nana. Because once Nana is gone, I mean, the, the combo potential, the desyncs are gone. The recovery is just obliterated. Like, there's yeah. nothing you can do there. The parry and parry really great response down there. Chris already at 140, and he takes another Aura Sphere to the face. Just Sue played that perfectly, just forced him into a really tight spot. There he is again, separating the climbers. Yo, oh my god. Chris is gonna stock it finally. Oh, I was gonna say he's got two stocks in this whole set. So that's all you need. That's better than me. <laughs> I didn't get any stocks against Sue. I also haven't played Sue, but you know, that's neither here nor there. Stock is where it counts, right, man? You don't want to get three stocks. Go home, think about it. Like, man, I can't believe I got three stuff by Sue. You can't feel too bad with Sue. That's true. Yeah, that's like, so the fact that he's got to feel like 110% right now. He's like, I got a stock. I can get another one. If I can get another stock. I can get the game. Ooh, there goes Popo. Well, that mentality is really good because if you think about it, you never want to psych yourself out. You only want to keep yourself in. If you're telling yourself you're losing, you're losing more than half the battle mental-wise. But you also got to be realistic here because so far, the way that Sue's been playing, he's kind of keeping Chris FTW on oh the space there, and he gets a God. great conversion there. No tech and the tech chase to do it. Yeah, that was a sick read, actually. Hit him with the neutral air, forced him, and just baited out that air dodge. Forced his hand by baiting out that air 